Good morning. Yeah, we got to do a little better than that. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I am William Jackson with the Department of Social Services, Mullinary Juvenile Shelter, the Juvenile Division Services Division. Please stand as you are able to for the presentation of colors by Prince William County Finest, the Honor Guard, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by the youth members of the Mullinary Juvenile Shelter. Then please remain standing as we do the, uh, the Negro National Anthem sung by Mr. Charles Hyman. Please join us. I pledge allegiance to the new flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty and let our rich joy sing. Rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. And God of our weary years, God of silent tears thou who has brought us thus far on thy way thou who has by thy might led us into the light Keep us forever in the path we pray. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on to victory. Is one, one. Wow. That was wonderful. You may please be seated. Thank you so much for for those wonderful, wonderful renditions. 
And once again, I would like to say good morning. And on behalf of the Prince William County government and the Board of County Supervisors, we welcome you to the 2023 Black History Program. I am Carletta Sims with the Office of Management and Budget and the Black History Committee Vice Chair. The mission of the Prince William County Black History Committee is to continue to enhance the understanding and cooperation of the many cultures in our community through education and interaction. And every year, the Black History Committee presents a program based upon the national black history theme. This year's theme for Black History Month is Black Resistance. Black Resistance examines how African Americans have fought oppression from, Amer from America's earliest days. Throughout our history, the resistance has come in many forms, culminating in a continuous movement created to obtain freedom and equality. It has been fought in the courts of public opinion, courts of law, and on the battlefield. The struggle has been audacious, as well as clandestine. Throughout the fight against oppression, however, African Americans have not waited passively to be given their freedom. Instead, being active, standing up, sacrificing, and fighting for those inalienable human rights guaranteed through the Constitution as American citizens. As in the rest of the nation, African Americans in Prince William County have represented all forms of black resistance. Now, with the presentation of our theme, it is my pleasure to introduce this year's Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Willie Hardiman. Willie Hardiman is currently a captain in the Sheriff's Office and has been Prince, a Prince William County employee for 23 years. Willie has been a member of the Black History Committee for more than 10 years of that time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Willie Hardiman. Thank you. Before we get started, I have a quick housekeeping matter. Please ensure that you have picked up your attendance gift. These include your lunch ticket in the water bottle. Lunch will be served in the cafeteria at the conclusion of the program. We are privileged to be gathered again in person after two years to celebrate. As we begin, I would like to take the opportunity to recognize our dignitaries in attendance today. If you're an elected official, please stand and be recognized. We thank you for your attendance today and for your support of the Black History Program. As you heard, the theme of this year's event is Black Resistance. I invite you to please think about the meaning of the word resistance. Two definitions of resistance from Oxford languages are the following. First, the refusal to accept or comply with something, the attempt to prevent something by action or argument. Second, the ability not to be affected by something, especially adversely. There are many ways that people resist. Resistance to oppression, can take many forms and American history is peppered with all sorts of examples in the face of separation, oppression, and discrimination. There are examples from education through attendance and opposition to separate but equal, military service despite discrimination showing patriotism, slave rebellion showing resilience, networks of like-minded people working together, legal challenges, the development of legislation and policy, cha policy changes, and social, political, artistic movements, and even joy shown in the face of oppression. Our program today will feature some individual examples of accounts that illustrate this point. But first, I, I want you to sit back and settle in and, and get ready for the first musical performance from Black Market Band. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good morning, everybody. How are you? Okay. Talk back to me now. We're Black Market. One day, when 
the glory comes it'll be ours it will be ours one day when the war is won we will be sure be sure hey one day when the glory comes it will be ours yeah it will be ours and one day when the war is won we will be sure we will be sure let me see it again oh one day when the glory comes it will be ours yeah it will be ours and one day when the war is won we will be sure be sure now the war is not over the victory isn't won the fight on to the finish until that job is done we'll cry glory hey glory our glory oh no no now the war is not over victory is in one we fight on to the finish till that day is done we'll cry glory It will be ours, be ours. One day, when the war is won, we'll be sure, be sure. Nineteen sixty who? Nineteen sixty what? Nineteen sixty who? Hey, the motor shit is burning, y'all, and that ain't right, no. Nineteen sixty what? Nineteen sixty who? Nineteen sixty what? Nineteen sixty who? Nineteen. Hey, the motor shit is burning, y'all, and that ain't right. Oh. Let me talk to him. There was a man, voice of the people, yeah, standing on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. Shots rang out. Yes, it was a gun. Yes, he was the one. And they shot him down, down, yeah. And that ain't right. This is what we said. Ain't no need for sunlight now. Ain't no need for moonlight now. Ain't no need for street lights, y'all. It's running real bright. Ain't no need for sunlight now. Ain't no need for moonlight now. Ain't no need for street lights, y'all. It's running real bright. 
Sacks, please. 
They fought with great courage and great faith in the promise of America. They did not despair of this country, for they believed in it and what the United States of America stood for. Imagine then how awful it must have been to fight for victory and democracy over there and yet be subject to racism and the failures of democracy here at home. In Richmond, Virginia, he had to pay to vote, an abhorrent practice called the poll tax. If for some reason he couldn't afford to pay, he might be allowed to vote if he could explain an arcane point of the state constitution to the satisfaction of a white election official. His wartime service, as well as the deep disappointment he felt upon returning home, spurred his interest in securing full voting rights for all Americans. My grandfather, like many returning black service members, joined African American political, civic, and social organizations that banded together to conduct voter education and poll tax payment campaigns so as to bring the franchise to black voters in Virginia. Later in his life, he also sued the city of Richmond for the now acknowledged practice of local, state, and federal officials running highways, freeways, parks, military bases through black and other ethnic neighborhoods. While his lawsuit was unsuccessful at stopping the highways, destroying these vital communities, my grandfather's lawsuit did force officials to pay above fair market rates for the homes and businesses they took through the eminent domain process. The Poe White Parkway in Richmond runs through what was once my grandparents' home. Although with the settlement they and their neighbors received, they were able to purchase new homes in the now integrated Richmond. My grandfather taught us that when you are faced with a society that not only doesn't value you, but is actively working to keep you in your imagined place, then you must resist those efforts. In other words, legal action is resistance. Education is resistance. Voting is resistance. Thank you, Bupak. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing your family history with us. Next, we have Mr. Nick Baskerville, a member of the Prince William County Fire Department for 20 years. Nick. What's going on, everybody? I know y'all. All right, you guys hear me? Oh, I was just checking because you didn't say anything back, right? Uh, you guys excited to be here? All right. Uh, but let's be honest, you're excited for different reasons, aren't you? Like some of you are excited because we're talking about black resistance at work, and then some of you are nervous because we're talking about black resistance at work, <laughs> and some of you are just hungry, right? That's, that's really what it is. I'm excited, but for, for none of those reasons, I'm excited because I didn't... I don't put on this suit. This suit gets me excited, right? Thank you to the one person back there that <laughs> has validated the fact that I picked the right thing to wear. My wife was asleep this morning. She didn't know what I put on. But have you ever had that, right? There's a pair of shoes or a hat or something that you put on. And you're like, oh, yeah. Don't worry. We're at work. I'm, I pick which memory to talk about here that we're they're here. And, and the memory that I think about is this. I was in Washington, D.C. I was at this really, really, really fancy hotel. And when you walk into the ballroom, it's like three times this size. And there's these tables that are all around. And, and people are there, and they're sitting, and they're drinking, and they're having a great time. And these aren't just anybody. These are the fire service elite, right? These are people who are fire chiefs in places or industry leaders. There's even some elected officials. They're all there because we're celebrating the... the last few days events because it's part of the Congressional Fire Service Institute. And there's a dinner at the end and then there's an award and there's a guy who's going to get the award so they're all there. I could care less about all of them. Except for one guy. 
That one guy, he's the reason why I'm there. Matter of fact, my whole goal is to take a selfie with a guy named Carl Holmes. Now, you might be questioning my life choices, the fact that my whole goal in life is to take a selfie. But let me explain to you, Carl Holmes is one of the first 12 African-American firefighters hired by Oklahoma City Fire Department. He rose to the rank of assistant chief. And back in the 70s and 80s, this is like a difficult thing. Like, that doesn't happen. And along the way, he helped to advance the fire service in different training, and he was respected all across the fire service. Then he retired. Now, here's the thing. I've not been retired before. Um, I've been asked to leave places on occasion. <laughs> but I imagine when I retire, like, that's it. Like, I'm not getting tired no more. Like, I don't know why there's a re in front of it. Like, I'm tired. But he retired, and then he went on to do more. He created this place called the Carl Holmes Executive Development Institute, EDI. And to, to put it in perspective, it's, it's like the fire surface version of a historically black college or university. So what happens now is that uh, once a year for a week, now it's at Dillard University, there are classes that are there. There are everything from what you need to promote to lieutenant or captain or fire chief. And then there's the other added stuff. You know the little something extra you get? Like uh, a class there just on African Americans in the fire service. And you find out about Molly Williams. You find out that Garrett Morgan didn't just make a traffic light, but he made the first example of what an SCBA would look like. There are all these things. The, where the, where the, the, the history of the fire pole comes from, which is from Chicago, and an all-black fire station who came up with that. So you, you learn all these things and, and interacting in the community. And it's a phenomenal place. And, and I want to take a picture with the guy that created it. Here's the thing. Uh, I never actually went. A uh, little awkward kind of a thing. So I, I see him there, right? And he's there, and he's a, he's a cool old dude, right? He's got the 1980s glasses that are bifocals. And he's got the cool man gray hair like it's an afro, but it's got gray streaks on the side. And I want to go talk to him, but, like, I didn't even go to his college. You know, I, I mean, it's everything from... Uh, everything from money and timing. And then I re realized, of course, as I'm watching people go talk to him, there are people that I know. I, I see the battalion chief from D.C. who's talking to him, who helped kind of guide me what I should do with my career. I see the, the guy from Fairfax who helped me prepare for my lieutenant's test. I see, all, I see somebody who helped me get on that committee to, in order to be able to, to, to help with a textbook. And I said, screw it. I'm going to shoot my shot. So I go over there and I talk to him for a little bit and he says yes to the selfie. And so we take the picture together and I feel this is awesome. And it, afterwards, I take a look at that selfie and I realize three things. One, I'm horrible at taking a selfie. Like we look <laughs> crazy together. Two, I realize that his form of resistance was him preparing other people to go help other people. And the last thing that I realized, because it's the model of EDI, is that all that I am, I owe. I live eternally in the red. Thank you, Nick. That was, uh, that was wonderful. Yes. Next we have our final personal account delivered by Mr. Curtis Porter who has served as our Human Rights Commissioner for the past 19 years. Mr. Porter. Well, that's, those, all right, Kimberly, don't start the clock yet. Those, those, those are tough acts uh, to follow. Um, but when we talk about uh, black resistance, I started thinking about who better to talk about uh, than myself. So I'll share my story. As a native of Prince William County, with over 200 years of family history in the county, I have, have engaged in many forms of resistance over the years. My first memory of being involved in direct resistance occurred when I was a sixth grader. Prior to the official integration of the Prince William County Public Schools in 1966, and I say the official integration because in 1964, in this very building, which was Garfield High School, Reverend Russell, who pastored uh, Ebenezer Occoquan, was the NAACP president and brought his daughter here in 1964. 
But when the schools officially integrated in 1966, Jenny Dean High School in Manassas was the African American was the high school for African Americans. When schools integrated, Jenny Dean High School became Jenny Dean Middle School. Three years later, when I entered Jenny Dean as a sixth grader, I was disgusted, disgusted to learn that the mascot had been changed from the Jenny Dean Bulldogs to the Jenny Dean Rebels. I turned my disgust into an act of resistance that led to the, name, the renaming of the mascot the Jenny Dean Blazers. As I reflect upon my years of resistance, it's impossible for me to talk about black resistance without acknowledging that I am a proud member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Black resistance is a part of who we are as men of Sigma. In 1940, Brother A. Philip Randolph, president of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, threatened to bring 100,000 members to Washington if President Franklin D. Roosevelt did not issue an executive order banning discrimination against black workers in the defense industry. That was 23 years before the 1963 March on Washington. On March 7th, 1965, two Sigma men, Brother Honorable Congressman John R. Lewis and Brother Reverend Hosea Williams, led a march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which is now known as Bloody Sunday. In 1966, in Oakland, California, a Sigma man, Brother Dr. Huey P. Newton, co-founded the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. In the late 80s, I was elected to serve as the youngest president, I'm told, in the history of the Prince William County branch of the NAACP. As president, I led the branch's fight to get the first African-American judge appointed to the bench in Prince William County in the 90s. As president of NAACP and Coles District Library Board member, I led the effort to get the first park and library named after an African-American family. We know it today as Chin Park and Library. Today, I am honored to serve as chairman of the Prince William County Human Rights Commission. It was black resistance that was in part responsible for the establishment of a commission with enforcement power to address uh, cases of discrimination affecting the residents and visitors who traverse our county. Opposition to the establishment of such a commission was strong from the county executive at that time, Jim Mullen, who wanted to establish what I call a feel-good commission with no ability to pr protect human rights of our residents or visitors to our county. The political resistance to the county executive's recommendation mobilized the black community and led, uh, led by the NAACP to show up at the Board of County Supervisors meeting in support of the establishment of a commission with enforcement power. As a result, the County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to establish a commission, a commission with enforcement power. And on January 15, 1993, the Prince William County Human Rights Commission opened its doors as one of only four commissions in the Commonwealth with the power to enforce local, state, and federal laws related to complaints of discrimination on the basis of race, color, sex, national origin, sexual orientation, familial status, familial status religion, disability, age, gender identity, marital status, source of income, and status as a veteran. As county employees in here today, you should know that you too have access to the services offered by the Prince William County Human Rights Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. That was very uh, impactful. PwC, people who care, right? Our next musical performance, the last and final performance. Now, y'all were impressed the last time, so get ready this time. Black Market Band. All right, we're back. Now, this time, I'm going to need a little bit of uh, crowd participation. Is that all right? Okay, y'all seem like y'all warmed up now, so I guess we can have a little fun. Come on. Somebody caught on already. Which is just right here. There we go. Oh. 
When I wake up in the morning, love And the sunlight hurts my eyes, yeah And something without warning, love yeah. But it's heavy on my mind Come on, you know the song? Then I look at you Hey! And the world's all right with me Just one look at you it's gonna be this your part. We say a lovely day. Impossible to face when someone else is scared of me. Always seems to know the way. Here we go. Uh, then I look at you. Oh, and I know. I need your help. Hey, oh, I just want to look at you. We're going to sing that again. Then I look at you, oh, hey, a lovely day, oh, oh, oh. good night, oh, no, 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 yeah, come on, Vince. so much. Black market. Black market. Those are powerful illustrations of resistance in the face of oppression. Thank you, Black Market Band, for that timely reminder that resistance in the face of oppression and discrimination is necessary for change to take place. As Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. so famously reminded us, the arc of the moral universe is long but it bends towards justice. Change takes a long time, but it does happen, often through resistance. This annual Black History presentation would not be possible without the dedication and hard work of the members of the Prince William County Black History Committee and the service of community members and performers. We will now present certificates of appreciation to this year's performers. For that, please welcome Kimberly Sparks, from the Human Rights Commission office, 
and Ebony Matthews from Department of Social Services, Molinary Juvenile Shelter. Good morning, everyone. So at this time, on behalf of the Black History Committee, we just want to acknowledge um, our performers that have helped us with this program. Um, so we're going to start off with Mr. Curtis Porter. Nick Baskerville. Charles Hyman. I will accept this on behalf of Mr. Charles Hyman. <laughs> Molinari Juvenile Shelter Residents. Ms. Sharon Richardson. And lastly, Black Market Bands. Thank you guys for celebrating with us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Let's have another round of applause, applause for our performance today, please. As we near the close of our program, I'd like to invite the new Prince William County Executive, Mr. Chris Shorter, to the podium for remarks on the county's presentation of the Black History Pro Program and the importance of this event and process from his perspective. Mr. Shorter is Prince William County's first African-American County Executive. Mr. Shorter. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Just really excited to be here. The program so far has been absolutely uh, phenomenal. I really want to start by just thanking and acknowledging uh, the Prince William County Black History Committee uh, for volunteering their time, their talent, and coming together to host this celebration year after year. Uh, and certainly for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of the program uh, this year. The committee produces, as you know, a black history uh, uh, celebration uh, that brings together county employees, uh, the public, uh, and friends and supporters uh, to highlight and celebrate the many accomplishments of black people and, and to remind us of the injustices and adversities experienced by so many. I know uh, we have taken time at the beginning of the program to acknowledge our elected officials and other dignitaries, but I, uh, I would like to personally thank each uh, of them for, again, being present today uh, and certainly for their leadership uh, in the county. I especially want to thank and acknowledge our board chair uh, and our board members uh, for their vision and for their bold action. They are creating change uh, in a way here in Prince William County that we just have not seen, so thank you. Uh, it has been said before that black history is American history. Today, we have seen that black history is a part of Prince William County's history. Uh, and uh, in that contributions and achievements of our ancestors, of our forefathers, must be remembered and in remembering passed down to the next generation. This celebration today is an opportunity to do just that, to remember, to celebrate, to pass down, and to grow stronger as individuals, as a community, and certainly as a government. Throughout the morning, uh, we've had the privilege to hear uh, about the legacy of those uh, who have evoked change uh, and change by way of resistance. Resistance to racism, resistance to discrimination, and resistance to oppression. The lives and accomplishments of our forefathers and elders remind us all of the overwhelming imbalance 
that caused by structural racism uh, in this society. And, 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 and this imbalance permeates every aspect of our personal, uh, personal and professional lives. As black people who work for and serve Prince William County, we are also aware of how much more we need to do uh, to create and nurture an inclusive environment uh, for African Americans and other people of color, both within our communities and within Prince William County government. I stand with you uh, in our unified commitment to identify opportunities to increase the level of diversity and inclusion within our individual agencies, departments, and certainly within our government. Uh, for those who may not know, I have been with the county for a short uh, month and a half. Uh, and, uh, and with that, I, I have certainly been impressed uh, with the county's uh, many uh, uh, ways of being included, uh, inclusive, and certainly the county's commitment uh, to building and sustaining an equitable and diverse and inclusive workforce to serve our community. As you know, in July of 2022, the organization adopted its equity and inclusion policy to operationalize equitable and inclusive outcomes for every employee, every resident, business, and visitor here in Prince William County. We have heard today about the bravery of change makers and the legacy they have left behind. Former President Obama once said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or for some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change we seek. The county will continue to celebrate the legacy of change makers and build upon it uh, to continue to move forward and to continue to bring change uh, that we seek. The equity and inclusion policy uh, that was passed in 2022 makes very clear that the county's commitment to change and dedication to integrating and including black and brown voices in all our decisions will continue. I am proud to be a part of an organization committed to becoming a beacon of social and racial equality. And I wanna thank you, uh, thank you again to the Black History Committee um, for all of the work that they do to create and produce such a wonderful program. And I wanna thank each of you uh, for being here today and for your continued commitment to Prince William County's future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shorter, for those remarks. We appreciate the support of the county in recognizing this event and the importance of celebrating black history. For our final performance today, I would like to introduce our Prince William County Poet Laureate, Ms. Kim B. Miller. Ms. Miller is Prince William County's first African-American Poet Laureate. Ms. Kim Miller. How's everybody? Poetry is not library time, people. I'll be starting off with a poem and then I'll get into some haiku. I'll explain what that is when I get there. First, the poem. Before I get into this poem, black resistance is knowing the truth and stating it. Black resistance is escaping from the jail cell of lies you've been told. Black resistance is telling your own story in your own way. I'm a African-American. I'm a misunderstood black woman. I don't have to wear a dashiki to be authentic and straight hair don't make me fraudulent. I'm an exit to hate. I'm a destination called distraction. I am Serena Williams. The assessment of my behind is astonishing. Even if I'm carrying a racket in an award, my behind is in a stage. But when you're writing history books, you don't look behind you. You just keep trudging forward. So go ahead and write about me. 
I don't have time for haters. My name, Bessie Coleman. You may not know me because I'm not in the Beyonce video, but I'm the first African-American female pilot. I would have learned the United States, but they wouldn't let me learn. So I taught myself French, moved to France, and became the first international pilot. You see, I was more concerned with flying than looking fly. My name, Michelle Obama. You may know me a little bit, but the only thing you talked about is the fact that I added a little bang to my hair like my knowledge stops on top of my scalp. They talked a lot about me, but they never mentioned I was the most educated first lady ever. You can call me whatever you like, as long as you call me the former first lady of the United States of America. My name, Catherine Mary Dorothy. I don't sound familiar, do I? Hmm. You may know me better as Hidden Figures. Remember that feel-good movie that NASA made about the past? Who knew NASA stood for naturally abolishing sisters' achievements? That's all right. It really should be called Lies You Told, Hidden Truth. The truth is out now, or is it? My name? Miss Montague, what, you thought NASA was the only one with a hidden figure? When I was a little girl, I went in the submarine and I looked at all the buttons and I asked the man, what do all these buttons do? He said, you'll never need to know. He was right, because I computerized the whole fleet. When I walked in, everyone used to say, can you get me coffee? Oh no, I run the department but you can get me some. I am Nichelle Nichols. You may know me better as Lieutenant Ohura from the Starship Enterprise. What you don't know is I almost quit that show, but some Trekkie talked me into staying. That Trekkie, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I said, Martin, why do I need to stay on this show? It's just some space show. He said, because you are Lieutenant Ohura, and not Ohura from house cleaning. So I stayed and boldly went where no black woman had gone before. I am any black actor. I can win an award for slavery, but not for bravery. Don't believe me? Ask Denzel. He got nothing for playing Malcolm X, but he got rewarded when he was selling X. That was our training day but we missed the lesson. Look, I didn't play this race card. I just showed you part of my hand. Haiku. For those of you who don't know what haiku are, you learned it in school, that part is still true. Traditional haiku, Japanese poem, 17 syllables, only on nature. You don't know the other part, 17 syllables called a senryu, any subject. Still 17 syllables, you got it? How many syllables? Oh, y'all yeah, listening, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna point to you before each one, and you're only gonna say haiku all together. Let's practice. Oh, all right, all right, okay. Haiku. Strong women are not unbreakable. We just know you ain't the hammer. You cannot Divide yourself into fractions to make someone else whole. It's okay to be scared. Do it anyway. Scared people succeed too. Dear people, there's no such thing as the right time, but there is a time you make right. And I'll leave you with this haiku. And people often ask me, what is the resistance? The resistance is you stop taking media sound bites and making the meals. 
the resistance stop listening to everything they tell you black people are and listen to our truth. The resistance is stop telling black people to stop talking about slavery, but 9-11 comes and you want us to get in line. We cannot forget something we live every day. And before you say, Kim, that was so long ago, it doesn't matter now. The pain of an unhealed womb never heals. And if you keep walking on the scar, the person who lived it feels it, and the person who steps on it ignores it. Resistance is listening to someone else's point of view and not settling in on your own like it's fact. I'll leave you with this haiku. haiku. They thought they broke you, but you're a glow stick. They just exposed your life. We're presenting Kim Miller. So one last thing. Um, so on behalf of the Black History Committee, we would like to recognize our chair, Byron Jenkins, for his hard work and dedication in serving our Black History Committee for the past three years. Byron? <laughs> we, we just want to thank you for your service and your dedication, and we really, really appreciate it. There are so many things that go um, on behind the scenes um, regarding this committee and putting these programs together, um, and all of us wanted to present you with this. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You stay right here. Right. You, stay, you stay right here. Thank you, Ms. Miller, for that impactful account of black resistance. Uh, wonderful. And now, please welcome, once again, he's already right here, the chair of our Prince William County Black History Committee, Byron Jenkins, a 19-year member of the Prince William County Police Department. He will uh, close the program and dismiss us for lunch. So if I don't get a response, I can't blame the, blame the mic, can I? Okay. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, I was not expecting this at all. I wasn't. Um, some of you know me. I, I, I do, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily a humble guy, but I am a humble guy. I do enjoy doing what I do, and I try to do the best that I can do with I, what I have. I've been taught that since I was a kid from my father. Um, but I was not expecting this at all. So. To me, this is my normal, and I'm not bragging or anything like that, but that's, that's just who I am. I, I just do what I do, and um, I do recognize that I can't be me if I don't have people around me that allow me to be the best me that I can. So if I can't take this time out right now, it's please, 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 spotlight not on me. Let's put the spotlight back on these people behind the scenes. Everybody from the Black History Committee, if you're backstage, could you come up front, please, and take a bow? And anybody in the audience who can't be up here, please stand, wave or something. Please. As everybody knows, these last few years have been whatever adjective you want to put in there. It's not been very good for anybody anywhere in the world. Um, so it made us change who we are and what we do and how we navigate through this world, through this life. And I will tell you, Black History Committee putting this thing together came with no exception. We had to do a whole bunch of things just like everybody had to do is, is change up what we did. And we had two programs during the pandemic. And they were unorthodox, they were, un, you know, just like anything else, we had to do it any way we could do it with the technology that we had. Um, 
we had even thought it for a millisecond not to even try, try to do the Black History Program doing this, but I know my team, my colleagues, my friends, my family, they all convinced me that we, it was important for us to continue this to keep going through the pandemic. So it was a lot of hard work. We had to be very creative, very imaginative, and we had to think outside the box, so to speak. I hate to quote, uh, quote that cliche because I think everybody, thinking outside the box is not thinking outside the box anymore. It's our new normal, right? So, so that's the way we do things. But I couldn't do anything. We couldn't do anything unless we did it all together. And please, that, that part of that plaque that they, they gave me is, part, is partially theirs because that plaque doesn't mean anything without them behind me. And I just want to give them, say thank you. We pre I appreciate you. Thanks for supporting me. Appreciate it. Now get off stage. <laughs> One tidbit, they voted me the uh, chairman right at the beginning of the pandemic, which we didn't know was a pandemic at that time. So I got thrown into the fire real quick. I have an old boss. He says, like, drinking out of a fire hose in the back. That's how I got exposed to this and doing the things that I'm doing. So, But anyway, wasn't that a great program, folks? I don't want to keep you long because I can't get long-winded. Again, I know there's people out there that know me, and I can't get along with it. But um, I do want to say thank you for coming out. We appreciate you coming out here. The importance of this program still remains. Black history is still very relevant to our history in this country. It's still re very relevant for us to point that out and acknowledge that uh, the history that we have is very contributory to what we have and enjoy in this country right now. Black resistance, just like Nick said, some people were happy about it, and some people felt some kind of way about it. I hope that this program just did, hope it gave you a different outlook or maybe through a different lens on how black resistance looks. Because it is king. It is X. It is all those things. It is Black Lives Matter. And I'm going to say it. It is all those things, folks. It is. But also, it's from a different perspective from people's personal accounts on an everyday level, dealing with everyday people on everyday situations. And that's just the way life is in America. That's how we live. We have elected officials supposed to do the things that we ask them to do, but also individually we have a responsibility to do those things also, to do those things and continue those things, to hold these people accountable. And if not, then we, we make a choice to do what we have to do to, to hold them accountable for. Either vote them out or go talk to them. And because your side didn't win doesn't mean that they don't represent you. They represent everybody. So with that, Yes, black resistance is something that people get upset about, some people were happy about, but I hope we, give you, hope we gave everybody a different perspective on looking at that. Um, so before we get out of here, those bags that everybody has, there's bottles inside. And inside those bottles are the little red tickets. Those tickets are what get you in to go get something to eat after the program. Please, before you, um, before you go outside, or before you hand those tickets over to some, the people that are going to be taking them out there, just take the tickets out the bottles. Otherwise, we'll be collecting a bunch of bottles, which we don't want to do because we have enough in storage to try to get rid of them. <laughs> um, so take the tickets out and use those. Don't throw them away. Uh, that's what gets you in to, to eat in the back back there. They have some good food uh, ready for you, prepared for you. I will not say a prayer individually, please. If you, if you bless your food, then you do as you may. And if you don't, then that's okay, too. All right? All right, folks. Again, thank you. Glad to see everybody again. Hope to see you next, next year at the next event. Thanks. Have a good time. <laughs>